What is up? This is Andy coming to you before the Super Bowl. You've probably watched every video under the sun. I don't even know how you do it. I don't even blame you for not watching this video, but I just thought, how can you put out these videos for the NFL the entire time and then just not put one out for the Super Bowl? I think I have to put one out since it is the Super Bowl, and there is relevant information. I think every when you watch a video, if, if I was you and I was watching the assortment of videos on picks and predictions and all this, I would just try to take out like one key fact from all these people's video that you really think will help you formulate whatever the hell it is that you want to do. One thing I'll start with, the best advice I can give you is stay away from any of this ludicrous horoscope. Oh, and Taylor Swift was born on the 13th, and then when she was a kid, uh, she got broken up with on July 13th, which means number 13. If you do any of that, you are a huge donkey. Like, you're a donkey of epic proportions if you've been seduced into thinking such nonsense can occur. I won't even figure out what it is. As soon as I, I just started seeing some number, oh, the 13th, uh, and then I just kept going on. It's like if, if I went on a date with a girl and they start to, are you a, uh, are you a Capricorn? And I just, I give that Jack Nicholson. <laughs> I'm whatever you want me. All right, wait, wait what's, your, what's your sign? What, what are you normally attracted to in, by the books? And I'll tell you if I'm close. <gasps> Libra? That's me. I'll be whatever the hell you need so that we can get on to the next topic, which is my favorite Super Bowl bets. Now, the one key piece of information that I'm going to try to relay to you guys, and if you've watched my San Francisco 49ers videos for years, the last couple of years, there's one piece of information that I've always let you know in must-win games when everything's on the line Kyle Shanahan will manufacture touches for Debo Samuel. Debo Samuel is not leaving this game unless he gets injured without many touches because he knows he's one of the few guys you can give him something behind the line of scrimmage. You can just give him a four-yard play, and he can make a bunch of people miss tackles, and he can make so much happen. He's a dynamic playmaker. You saw this in the last Super Bowl, and you saw Shanahan use, use him a ton in the NFC Championship. The only reason I wasn't all over that last game was because he left the previous game fully. Like, he didn't return, and I just thought, what are the odds this guy in seven days is fully healthy? Well, I guess he had a speedy recovery process, but you add two more weeks onto that. And I already told you in that first Super Bowl video, that was the premise behind my, oh, Debo in the first quarter, Debo in the... But just the overarching Debo Samuel bets... Like the standard over on receiving yards, I, I just have to take that in the 50s. I know he's going to get those opportunities to make that happen. And then the over on his rushing attempts is set at two and a half. I got to think he gets to that two and a half. And I understand it's like minus 160 or something like that. But that's one I don't mind. There are plenty of other things that you can take and mix and match. But Debo Samuel being a part of this game, even if you don't like either of those and you want to take him for a touchdown, this game isn't going by without him having its his say on it. Like Brandon Ayuk, if he gets shut down by Snead or somebody, no, that's not going to surprise me. If they go run heavy and they don't need to throw it a lot and Kittle doesn't hit his over like 50, whatever, like 52, that wouldn't surprise if McCaffrey doesn't have a huge game rushing because of the Chiefs, that wouldn't surprise me. But what would surprise me is if Debo Samuel has two catches, two rushes, and that's it. No, they're going to manufacture ways for him to get the ball. And anytime you have one of those guys who's just getting free catches behind the line of scrimmage and go make it happen, then you usually can take some over on that kind of guy's props and feel good about yourself. So Debo Samuel over on receiving over on rushing attempts and then a little side sniff for a little bit you know plus money rushing plus receiving 100 plus but those standard lines on Debo I think are more than fair in a game where I'm certain Kyle Shanahan will manufacture touches for him then one of the bets that I mentioned in the previous video I still think is a great value and that's the George Kittle over on longest reception I mean this guy can get nothing Zero catches. It just means that they're playing effectively and running, and that just opens him up for that one where he slips out behind the line. His longest reception is almost always over 20. Rarely do you see him get an eight-yard catch and fall down. 
He's a guy streaking down the seams and is able with his speed and ability to break tackles to make that happen. So the over, I believe it was 20 and a half. I hope it's still at that number for all you guys. Now, obviously, I think when you watch these Super Bowl bets and these videos, you want to know, like, what's something wild? What I need to know something crazy. Why, everyone's got to take something a little crazy, like Norman Bates. We all go a little mad sometimes. So those were some of the things that I really just like in the game. And then there are a couple Norman Bates bets where we all go a little mad sometimes. But before that, don't think I'm not going to mention the top Area 51 play. The top odd shopper premium play is the under on Isaiah Pacheco rushing yards. You know, I always loved his receiving. I mean, I started the over on receiving for Isaiah Pacheco train before every last person in whatever you want to call this analyst industry fantasy you name it i was on those pacheco over on receiving but the under on his rushing you know the beautiful thing about area 51 they'll find you that at the best possible price and i just placed one on this on caesars it's plus 110 and that's one of the benefits of area 51 and always remember i leave the link in all my videos down below if you guys ever want to sign up you click that link i get credit for you and then you get to see more things like this where it will show you all the bets on all the sites and which ones are the most valuable to take i did take that one the under on isaiah pacheco's rushing yards now let's get to some of my norman bates bets typically i tell you guys if a sports book offers you some fancy boost on a price or something that that's like being in the red light district in Amsterdam. It's somebody just dancing in front of you. Hey, you want to come in for a, a private session? You never get what you want. I wouldn't know this, but I've read some things and you leave broke. Usually I'm very against all sorts of those boosts. And as I read yesterday online, that guy, uh, uh, Adam Levitan, he said that even if you look when they boost many things, the actual odds of what it should be, like they'll boost something at minus 110 and make it plus 150 but the actual price it should be is plus 200 you think you're winning you're still losing it's like when you go to the supermarket and they say oh so, you know save with your ralph's card so they make a fake price that's not even real they just they say a thing of peanut butter is 12 dollars, but with ralph's you can get it for eight and then with the ralph's deal you can get it for five that thing is three dollars and you're using all these fake discounts to make me think i'm getting a deal so don't get ralph's discounted on super bowl by all these things but when it shows you a list of specials you know all of them aren't going to fail so i tried to pick two big specials and one that i saw is both teams to score one plus touchdown and one plus field goal in each half, meaning both teams, the Niners and the Chiefs, are both going to get a touchdown and a field goal in each half. I don't know why. That just sounds like, but isn't that going to happen? Am I reading this wrong? Am I reading this wrong? Maybe one of you people can tell me. Doesn't that seem like it's going to happen? Because one thing you know about Kyle Shanahan, as you saw, even as he was down multiple scores, he still takes the field goal. Did you see that opening drive in the second half against Detroit? I feel like he doesn't want to get in Purdy's head or anything like that. So if he gets an opportunity, he kicks field goals. And then when you get one field goal declare, it's like it's like a draw or something where one person goes, shing, I'll take field goals. And then the other coach goes, all right, so we're down three. Shing, I'll take a field goal. And Shanahan, I'm hoping, comes through with a field goal in each half, which sets the tone where, okay, we'll make this one of these field goal games where it's not maniacs going for it on every fourth down. So that's my one of my calculated gambles. And then one that I took with a... Fr I'm kind of crazy. I shouldn't... I should not have done this, but I did it anyway. And how many, th how many times have you guys said that, hey, I shouldn't have done this, but I did it anyway? Not just in sports betting in all sorts of things. I shouldn't still be up at 1.45 in the morning, and I'm going to watch another episode of this thing that Netflix scammed me into with a great cliffhanger ending. So the last wacky one I have, Christian McCaffrey and Travis Kelsey to combine for 10-plus receptions in the first half. What am I looking for here? Obviously, building Brock Purdy's confidence with a couple easy catches for Christian McCaffrey, which is why I also, in the previous video, took his first quarter over on receiving yards. I'm hoping he gets a couple dump-offs. And also, Travis Kelsey, I'm hoping for what we saw in these 
last couple of games. Early involvement, getting some first downs, nothing crazy down the seam, the, essentially the opposite of George Kittle. Get Mahomes some first downs by getting into those weird little windows where he improvs it and Mahomes also improvs it. And getting to that many catches between those two, it's not the craziest thing in the world. Do I think it's likely? Like I said, it's a Norman ba- it's a Norman Bates bet. So if you lose it, you're gonna have to tell somebody which bet did you lose? The Norman Bates bet. Why why is it the Norman Bates bet? Because we all go a little mad sometimes. But that is one of my two Norman Bates bets. The other one, I, I don't know, it, it has to lose or something because it just seems like it's it's too likely for those odds. Anyway, enjoy your Super Bowl. Okay, have a good time. Hopefully you're with some friends. I hate to say don't sweat these too much, but don't. I mean, this is a game that everyone's betting on. I, It's almost like holidays. Are you the guy who's going out on New Year's Eve? That's the guy who's betting on Super Bowl. You want to go out and have a good time on vacation, not get kicked out of the bar at 1 a.m. because of the whole, it's New Year, so the event just ends and now you're out on the street, despite the fact that the bar was open till 4 a.m. the night before, but now because it's New Year's Eve, we're kicking everybody out. That's what this night of betting is. You want to know what I'm happy to bet? April 9th. What's April 9th? I don't know. There's just a bunch of random games on and I'm going to be looking at it and that's a day that I want to win. So try to enjoy it more than you are sweating it. If you want the classic, oh, what do you think is going to happen? I will tell you this, and you take what you want from this. Every regular guy, every Dan, Dave, Joe, Bob, Tom, Will, every four-letter name and under is taking the Chiefs plus two. Everybody. Every, every last person. And if these sports books are to be believed when they tweet out things, I know there's a couple of conspiracy theorists out there that think fake accounts are made up to put in fake bets to get lead fake people fake ways. Okay, whether that's true, not true, whatever. Apparently, the massive bets that are coming in, like every $10 dinky bet is coming in from all the people watching these videos. The $250,000 whale bets are all coming in on San Francisco. Maybe everybody's going to be happy. I saw that the worst scenario for all the sports books involved, a one-point win by the San Francisco 49ers. That's the worst case scenario. So if that happens, all your theories for all time are going to be thrown out the window. If they win by one or two and all the people who took the Chiefs by the points win and all those money line whales win, you really can't ever use that excuse that, oh, but Vegas controlled the game. Well, no, because they, they need to give it to you one year, then they're going to take it from you four years in a row, and it all balances out. Okay, well, you keep track of those charts, and I'll just try to give you some good sniffs. It's all Debo Samuel. For me, I know he'll be involved. May ask me to pick a winner. I, I, I came up with a rule, and I'm never going to break it. I will never take any points against Patrick Mahomes. I will never bet against Patrick Mahomes to lose a spread, but because I just refuse to go in with all the Joe Blows at McGillicuddy's Inn, the bar starts with MC, and then you could just McMahon's, McGillicuddy's, McNulty's, McKenzie's, McSorley's, all those are taking the Chiefs, and I, I just can't be in with them. I can't be in with them with their standard beer, and I, I just can't. I'm going with the Niners by one or two so I can say that I didn't bet against Patrick Mahomes by the spread because I'm not one of these false vowers. If I vow something, it's usually in stone. It's going to take something real wacky for Mahomes to have to come off that list. But I'm not. Not doing it. So I will take the Niners to win by one or two. You can take that for what you will. You know you can add those in the same game parlay right on the main screen. You can click Niners money line and the plus two and a half and it will give you the odds of like plus 1300 or something like that that'd be pretty fun anyway that's what i got for you here enjoy the super bowl have a good time subscribe here to my youtube channel for other standard the april 9th videos that's where you can get them right here and that's what we'll try to really nail some wins a couple months away we got the nhl playoffs coming i mean there's a third of the season left. That won't be too far away. Hopefully, you guys are all here to enjoy it. I will talk to you tomorrow for some NHL sniffs. What am I talking about? Tomorrow is actually Sunday. I will talk to you on Monday for some NHL sniffs and be on the lookout for another comedy pod that I'm going to drop here. Some people put in the comments, man, I'd really like to check out your comedy pod. Where is it? 
how the hell do I not communicate that it's right here on this channel? Like if you subscribe to this channel or you even just go to the homepage, click videos, there's a full playlist for that podcast. Look at the thumbnails. There will be my face on a bunch of them that clearly is sports picks. And then you'll see like Ryan Gosling screaming in the rain with you're still here on it. All those are the comedy pods. Check those out if you want. They're not like current events pods. So you can watch one from two years ago and it should still apply. Like I, there's everything I talked. I, I have all my scams. The reason that's there is because I have a scam of the week. All my scams of the week still apply like this one. This week I talk about how on Valentine's Day, you can Uber Eats flowers to people, but you got to make sure that they know that it's not from Uber Eats. And I have a way to order flowers for someone Uber Eats style because, yeah, they give you full flowers from florists there, but you can't have the girl knowing that these flowers came from Uber Eats. So I have a scam to make sure they're dropped off there and timed out no receipt that says Uber Eats. So go check that out once it's available in the next day or two. I will uh, talk to you on Monday for some NHL sniffs later. <laughs>